Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. On our YouTube channel, we talk about all things homesteading and try to implement some of those things on our rural 100 acres here in Southern West Virginia. Well, in this video, I wanna share some of our quick tips that we use to, to clear out along our electric fence line. Now, some of you guys may say, well, as far as the fence line goes, when it's time to clear it, I just simply use some herbicide and spray that and keep all that down. And that's fine if that's your choice. Um, you know, free country, all that type of stuff. But we choose not to do that. We don't want to use herbicide on the place unless we absolutely have to in some areas. So, so far we haven't had to do that. Uh, so when it comes time to manually removing those weeds and all that debris around the fence, uh, then that can be some, uh, some tedious work. But uh, there's some neat tricks that we use that allows us to get the fence out of the way so we don't damage it and can get uh, cutting pretty quickly. Well, it's fall and we should be having cooler temperatures, but right now it's, it's almost 90 degrees. Uh, a little crazy, but uh, we are seeing obviously the, the effects of fall. The, the days are getting shorter, sun's lower, sun doesn't have the potency uh, that it normally has in the summertime. Uh, and the grasses are starting to change. Some of the, uh, uh, the grasses that, that go dormant early are already turning brown. But this is a good time where I like to do my, uh, what I hope to be my final maintenance uh, for the pigs electric fence uh, before they go to processing as we're kind of winding out the season here. But uh, over the summer, because of all the rain we've had, there's been some neglect in somebody um, trimming the grass around the electric fence. So I'm just curious to see, I'm gonna test here real quick and just curious to see what I'm getting as much grass as there is on this fence all across the pasture. I'm gonna put my tester on there and see what we're getting. We're getting 1.97. So that's uh, 1.9, almost two kilovolts, which in my experience isn't enough to keep a pig back, that you want about three kilovolts to keep a pig back. You know, I can't stress enough how uh, important it is to have a good fence tester, and don't just go with one of the fence testers that light up to let you know there's current or not. Uh, go with a digital one that you can actually get a display, because uh, in my experience, again, with pigs, three kilovolts is the minimum you need to keep them in, so you want to be able to read what you're actually getting. Um, I actually use this Zariba fence tester. Uh, just check to make sure it was available on Amazon. It is, so I'll put our affiliate link down there if you want to use this one. I think it's less than 50 bucks. It's worked pretty well. Even when you, you sit on the probe and break it, you can still electrical tape it back together. So uh, it works pretty well. Well, fortunately, it's so late in the season that uh, the pigs really haven't tried the fence. The, uh, the ones we're taking to market, what I consider the piglets, which again are now almost 300 pounds, they don't really try the fence. Everyone knows where it is. They just kind of hang out now. My breeding sows, I could leave the fence unplugged for a year and I don't think they'd ever try it. Uh, but it's, it's good to get it cleaned up. I don't want to have everything die on it over the year, over the winter time, hang on the fence and then not clean it out and then come back in the spring and stuff come back and kind of get a double mat there. So we're gonna, we're gonna clear it out. And there's a couple little quick tips and show you uh, that make uh, cleaning out your fence line pretty easily. So as you can see, or maybe you can't, uh, a lot of grass laying on this electric line. There's a, there's a branch laying there. He's definitely been uh, neglected this moist season we've had. But um, you know, if, if I was just gonna come through here with my string trimmer and, and string under, uh, trim underneath it with the weed eater and clean that up, that would work fine. It's one of those things where you definitely wanna unplug it. You, know, you can electrify your shaft of your uh, weed eater and still get a pretty good shock out of that if it was on. But uh, the issues you run into, and, and maybe not as much with this 14 gauge, but 17 gauge, uh, using the weed eater we use, you can actually end up tearing up your wire. So it's one of those things where you want to try to get your wire out of the way. And that's why I really like using these insulators, these pin type insulators. They drop, uh, drop a pin down in. So what I can do in this situation, where I've already got an angle coming this way, I can just simply pop this pin back out and voila, all my tension on that fence makes this wire come this way further into the pasture. And uh, I can now weed eat this whole stretch there. In fact, all of my fence posts along this line are using these pens. These uh, locust posts we have, they're using the pens. If I was using just traditional uh, yellow insulators, the type that have a hook up and a hook down that the wire passes through, and you can imagine, uh, you have to turn that wire you know, at least 45 degrees, maybe 90 degrees to get that to release. 
And that's a little tougher to do when you've got it on the T-post or those are one of those nail ends. Uh, it, you can't really do that if your wire is under a lot of tension. And we use heavy duty tensioners with this 14 gauge. So when we have this thing tied up, we have it tied up pretty tight. So putting this back, uh, if I was using one of those hook insulators, then I wouldn't necessarily have enough slack to, you know, to turn that back in and, and fit it in there. With this, all I have to do is stretch it. If, I, if I've got it too tight and too far away, then I can get some help. I can have Kelly or the boys lean into it and stretch it for me, and I can drop that pin back in. So this really comes in handy. And um, there's a whole bunch of these. You can get them that nail this type of nails on. Uh, there's, a type, there's several types that clip on to the uh, T-posts. Um, so it and still has the pen, and I'll, I'll put some links down uh, to Amazon, but you can get them at any of your, uh, like Rural King or Tractor Supply will have those as well. So we'll get the weed here all fired up and get this line cleared out and put it back together. Well, we got the fence line clear. You know, there's something uh, satisfying about watching somebody run a weed eater in time lapse and speed up. It just, I don't know, I'd, I could watch that all day. <laughs> Wish I could move that fast. <laughs> but um, so we got the line cleared. Now I'll come back with the mower probably this week. We'll put the bush hog on the tractor and we'll mow everything. That'll be my final mow for the year. But uh, one other thing, I've talked about this before, but you can never have too many step-in posts. And always keep new ones around or keep some busted ones around if they still have some use to them. But as you can see where I was using this one here, it allows me, if, let's say you're in a situation where right, right now I've got the fence turned off, the sows are over there, in fact, they're, they hear me, so they're starting, starting to grunt, but they're not gonna come down and try to get under this uh, because they're pretty chill. But if you had more aggressive pigs that were trying to get through the fence and you wanted to do this and still keep your fence hot, then that's where you could come in and, and take your step-in post and just temporarily step inside your pasture and stick it down. So like this one, I put it at the top, so I've got the wire up out of the way so I don't hit it. But when I go back to where, where I'm supposed to be, then that will be back over here on this side of this little wash and I go down about the second second rung there and I drop that in so that's where the fence line is supposed to be and again you can see well I don't know if you can see from this distance or not but the, the fence is obviously laying on the ground because I haven't put the pay, uh, pins back in but now I'll just go along and pin everything and we'll get it back together okay so now that I've removed all that grass and everything I I got a little bit of slack in my uh, in my fence here, so I'm going to take my uh, fence tightener and give it a couple cranks. That's what I like about these tensioners over the the plastic ones. Uh, seems like when the, I have the plastic ones, the deer when they run into this fence just obliterates the plastic ones; they blow apart. So you know, invest a little bit more in these uh, metal ones, and they seem to hold up pretty well. So that's uh, let me go one more. Press my luck here. One more tension there. And that's got it pretty tight. So the line's cleared all the way along this line. There's a couple more I need to do, so we'll, uh, we'll spare the gory details there. Well, I hope your all's fall prep is uh, going well and that it's, and you're not getting as much rain as we are, unless you need rain. Maybe you're getting as much as you need. One thing I've been getting comments about with the channel, many of you have uh, commented that you're not getting notified or you're not aware when a video comes out. And uh, so it's one of those things, kind of a, a basic housekeeping thing. If you go to our YouTube channel page, you'll see over to the side the button where it says subscribe, and it'll say subscribed if you're a subscriber. And right beside that's a little bell icon. That's a notification. And if you click on that bell icon, you get some options there to just turn on push notifications. So on your mobile device, it'll just give you that little red notification, little red one there that there's a new video from one of your subscribers. So you may want to try that out if you're if you're afraid you're missing videos that are coming out. And uh, and again, we're still experimenting with this one video a week. We may do, uh, I have a feeling we're gonna have a hybrid in between. Um, we'll do at least one video a week is probably what we're gonna go to. So there'll be times uh, when we've got a lot going on that we can put out videos more than just once a week. But there may be a week where um, because of the weather, because of other things that one's all we can do. But we'll promise at least one a week.
All right, uh, check us out on our website, redtoolhouse.com, and uh, give us a like on Facebook if you haven't uh, done so already. Check us out there. I don't know what that just did to the mic. But we appreciate everybody watching. Okay, take care, everybody.